Let's see how this works. I have an app that started to run. This app is going to lock this one out after 30 seconds. I'll speed things up here. And boom. Hi, this is Mr. Dang. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can set up a system so that each of your users can only sign in one time for each different app that you have. Let's take a look. I'll start at the table. My table is made up of five columns, a timestamp for when the user logged in, the email of the user, the name of the app, a session ID number, and the status. Are they active in this session or are they inactive? I'll walk you through the controls. This toggle that you see at the top of the screen, it's all of the on start actions that I want to happen when a user first opens this app. Now I did it externally from the original one. If you deselect all the controls, you can select the on start property of the screen. For me, when I start the app, what it's going to do is it's going to switch on the on start toggle using this variable, which is the same thing as just putting all your actions in here. I just made it external so I could trigger it for testing purposes. So here it is. When reset on start becomes true, this will flick on and then it'll perform these actions. Let's take a look at the actions that happen. First, it uses a variable to show a waiting animation. So it sets this variable called wait to true. I have an image here. You can't see the picture right now, but it's set to a GIF, an animated GIF. And it's only visible when the weight is true. So when this flickers true, it'll show up. Right now, I'll just go ahead and show you what it looks like. OK, so it's an hourglass. Uh, I'll keep it to the variable. OK, the next part of this formula. Identify the current user once, so you don't have need to do it again. User uh, dot email. This makes a call to the internet. So instead of using typing this in in multiple locations and causing it to make a call, I'm sending it to a variable once. And then I'll use the name of this variable everywhere that it appears. To make this system work, I need a session ID number. I just modeled this after the Power App session ID number scheme. What I've done is I'm going to generate a random session ID number in hexadecimal form. Now, you don't need it this complicated. What this means is it's going to create a, an eight digit or hexadecimal character, four digit, four digit, and then I believe this is 12. Let's take a look at an individual one. This means from this string right here of text, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, in other words, 16. Uh, total characters, numbers, and letters, it'll pick one of them. In other words, it'll choose a random number between 1 and 16. Whatever that number is, it's going to correspond to one of these characters. And it's going to be a length of 1. So if, it, if I call, if it picks the random number 7, uh, 6 is the seventh uh, character there. So it'll choose that. So I just repeated it multiple times, and I put in some hyphens strategically um, to create this long session ID number. Again, you don't need it that complicated. You could just have it four digits. Next, collect all old sessions that are active. What this means is, I'm going to go back to my table. going to look at all of these old sessions right here. If it's true, and it's the same app, and it's this user, it'll pull them all in. I want to know all of the old sessions. 
because my next step is for all of those old sessions, I'm going to turn that status to false. I want to invalidate them. So as soon as a user logs in, it'll invalidate all their other sessions so that it only keeps this session active. Taking a look at the formula, here I renamed the columns of this just so that um, I could avoid any issues with um, column names that are the same thing. Um, and then I'm performing a lookup. For each of those ID numbers, I'm going to get the exact uh, row that it's in, so the one that matches my user email, and the one that matches that particular, that respective um, session ID number, and I'll turn its status false. Once the old sessions are false, I'll write a new session. This means go back into that user log email or that user log table. Defaults of the user log just means a new record, a new row. I want the timestamp to be right now. I want the user name to be that user email that I determined earlier. The app name I've stored in a label right here. Just type the name of my app. This way, I could reference it in multiple places. Going back to the toggle, the session ID number is going to be whatever I had determined here. And then I want the status to be true. In other words, I want it active. I'll give a signal that the first load is done. So this is a new variable. First load is true. And I want that. I need that variable. Uh, I'll describe it later. After that, I'll switch the toggle off. Reset on start is that variable that I put into the on start property at the beginning. Here it starts off true. It flicks the switch on. And then when all of these actions are done, it flicks the switch off. Finally, I turn off the waiting animation when everything is done. So that's a nice workflow. The next component is this timer control. Over on the right hand panel of the advanced uh, settings, I have a duration of 30 seconds, 30,000 milliseconds. Oh, I need to make this timer repeat. What it's going to do is every 30 seconds, uh, it this, this timer is going to automatically start, but every 30 seconds that the timer ends, it's going to collect those old sessions again. So this is the exact same formula as we saw in the on start toggle. I want to know those old sessions because if the current session, if the one that I identified at the very beginning is not uh, is not active. It's not in that uh, set of active sessions. Well, disable the app and bring me to the first screen. This variable disable app, I have a different image for that. When disable app is uh, turned on, this giant image is going to fill the screen and the user will be navigated to the screen so that they can't do anything. The reason why I went with this method um, is I didn't want to accidentally uh, ruin this entire app. So just to be just to be clear, you could actually exit a user from the app by using the exit function. It looks like this. Now. I don't want to do that because it could cause some serious issues if you don't set some conditions on when you shouldn't exit the app, right? You don't want the app to permanently be closed because you put that function in. So I just decided to go with this method. Um, so what this is looking for is 
if the session ID number is not in one of those old session IDs that are active, and as long as the first load has been completed, then it'll go ahead and perform this. So if the app is just started and first load is false, well, you wouldn't want to close out this app. Let's see how this works. I have an app that started to run. This app is going to lock this one out after 30 seconds. I'll speed things up here. And boom. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting power apps, please subscribe.